I had read the list of instructions thousands of times. The Crimson Carnival can only be found by following a series of specific directives, as outlined by those who had successfully ventured there in the past, just as described by the moderators of the private online forum. I found it at 3.53 a.m. on the Friday the 13th, far out in the countryside after a series of meandering twists and turns that I had followed meticulously as outlined by those who had journeyed to the carnival before me. The detailed instructions were specific and required pain and personal sacrifice, but I was willing to do what I had to. My palm still stung from where the blade had pierced it, and I had intentionally left the wound undressed. Again, another necessary part of the journey. Blood poured from it all over the steering wheel. This seemed distant and unimportant now. I had found a place. After years of hearing about it, reading about it, researching and building up the courage, I had actually found it. I turned off the engine and got out of the car. The cool night, air crisp and fresh, as I breathed in. Walking towards the entrance of the fairgrounds, I saw no one else around. The outside of the place was empty and devoid of visitors, forsaken. The moon was a sliver in the dark night sky above. Sounds of activity could be heard from within the fair. Carnival barkers and rides. The loud ding 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 of someone winning a prize. Everything that would make you think it was a regular carnival. An ordinary fair. A clown was at the entrance. His face was painted bright red around the eyes and mouth. His hair and round nose also crimson. He wore yellow pants with suspenders and welcomed me, waving an oversized white-gloved hand as I approached. Hoo <laughs> I've got a surprise, it's true. Who found the Crimson Carnival? What a delight, it's you. The clown with the yellow pants was there, just like all the reports had said. You found the place, my friend. Get inside and have some fun. Your time now very soon will end. The crimson death can't be undone. His face was a toothy grin, all smiles and giggles as he recited the welcoming rhyme, all but the last line which he said in a low growl. Following that, he looked serious and angry. I was taken aback. He was supposed to say, the crimson fair lives with the sun as the final line in the rhyme. He was supposed to be the cheerful welcome clown. No scary shit yet. Not yet. But instead, he had said, the crimson death can be undone, in that terrifying, low rumbling voice. And I couldn't help but wonder if I had made some mistake in the ritual. His upper lip quivered as he continued to growl at me. He was supposed to keep smiling, waving and looking friendly. The dark, really creepy shed was farther in. Out by the entrance the carnival was reported to look bright and welcoming. It didn't usually reveal its true form until you were well inside the fences. I just stood there, sweating, panicking, retracing my efforts. I had made no errors, though. I realized as I went through each part of the instructions in my head and pictured myself in my memory doing exactly as instructed. Suddenly, I realized I had been standing there for a while, thinking, and the clown was still staring at me. The reply came to me immediately. After years of study, I had not forgotten. The cat on my palm still bleeding. I asked the question deliberately and verbatim, word for word as described online. All I have is a nickel, will that cover the fur? I held up the rare coin and it glittered red with my blood like a ruby in the moonlight. 
It lets you in, it lets you through. The bloody nickel. True, true, true. He was smiling again, and I let out a sigh of relief. Just a little different for a second, but back on track now. Nothing to be worried about. I walked past him and through the turnstiles. Looking back, I saw he was still smiling his white, toothy grin and took that for a good sign. He waved his white gloved hand at me and then was swallowed up by darkness and fog. At least he had stopped growling like a rabid dog after the toll had been offered. Something about that had really terrified me. Not that I wasn't already petrified, but when I had run through this in my mind approximately a million times, things had always gone to plan. According to the descriptions I had read over and over, memorizing them. At least he had stopped growling like a rabid dog after the toll had been offered. Something about that had really terrified me. Not that I wasn't already petrified, but when I had run through this in my mind approximately a million times, things had always gone to plan. According to the descriptions I had read over and over, memorizing them. No one had ever mentioned an alternate ending to the welcome rhyme. Was the place changing, evolving somehow? No, that was impossible. Through all the years and all the visitors it had stayed the same time. Why would it change now? Sarah would still be there, I told myself. She had to be there, otherwise this was all for nothing. I could handle being scared, as long as it meant getting her back. I had to get her back. Her absence in my life was like a missing appendage. The memories of her, a phantom limp that ached incessantly. She was there. I could feel her somehow. As unlikely as that sounds, I felt like with every step I got closer. The sounds rose up loudly around me from every direction as I entered the midway. First one, man shouting. Step right up, step right up, try your hand at the darts. You sir, you look like a man who knows how to win. How about taking a toss at the red balloons? Then a woman asking. How do you like to win a prize? Get the ball in the barrel and take home the bloody big bear. She pointed up and I caught myself following her finger and looking at the giant stuffed bears which hung suspended from the ceiling. Each one had a noose around its neck, with eyes red and bulging. The eyes look real though and I could have sworn I saw one swollen bear face look down at me pleading and terrified. Red fluid seeped from their mouths and dripped down onto the counter below. I dropped my gaze and reminded myself not to get distracted. Everything here was meant to steer you from your goal. Nothing was as it seemed. Keeping my head down, I continued to walk deeper into the midway. Cotton candy, hot dogs. Get your ride tickets here! Ride the ferris wheel with your true love by your side, a date she'll never forget! I walked past and heard him say quietly from behind me, She will stay here. Sarah will live and die and live again. Here, always here. She will stay here. You will stay here. My heart nearly stopped in my chest. That definitely wasn't supposed to happen. The carnival workers were not supposed to talk out of character to visitors. They were always supposed to stay in character. I tried to control myself but ended up running over to him, fighting my anger and hatred and fury and pushing it down deep. Stopping myself somehow from leaping over the counter and grabbing the man. What did you say? His mouth opened and closed like a goldfish, but
but he said nothing. What the fuck did you say? Write the salt and pepper shaker! You'll get all mixed up until you don't know up from down. No. Sarah. You said something about Sarah. I'm looking for her. Please, just help me. Tell me where she is. Why, Lady Luck? She's just around the corner. At the spinning wheel of chance. Place your bets there and win your heart's desire. I nearly screamed at him, but managed to restrain myself. It would serve no purpose other than wasting time. I checked my watch and saw I had already been inside for half an hour. The time was going fast. The man was just another distraction meant to keep me here longer. To keep me from my goal. To keep me from Sarah. Moving on, I kept my head on a swivel, looking every possible direction, checking every face. None of them were hers. Far ahead in the distance I saw the giant red canopy tent at the center of the fair. I hoped I wouldn't have to go in there. That's where all the most horrifying sights were, according to those few who had seen it and escaped. The cannibal killer clowns in their little car that drove around and stopped randomly piling out and murdering and subsequently devouring whoever was nearest and then lumbering back in and driving off. A polar bear on a unicycle that would cause similar damage during its rampages when it got inevitably bored of riding around. Chainsaw-wielding trapeze artists that swung down unexpectedly and cut you in half before you could even think to run away. And farther in, at the very center, who knew? No one had seen it. Only the most extreme thrill-seekers tried for the canopy. It was reserved for the most dedicated and experienced. I shuddered to think of going in there. I had planned to avoid it at all costs. I checked my watch again. This was going longer than expected. The place was drawing out every second of my time. Even the ground beneath my feet was sticky and muddy, and each step forward came with an increasing effort. My eyes darted around, looking in every booth and at every carnival worker. There were no other guests, so that made it a little bit easier. I walked past more carnival barkers and booths. After walking around the corner, I was confronted by a man shouting in my face. Test your strength! He was huge, wearing a leather vest and holding a massive sledgehammer in both hands. Turning around, he swung it and hit the bell, causing the machine to light up and ding incessantly. Turning away from him, I scanned the faces of every carnival worker standing behind their counters. A ringtoss booth was just ahead, and I began to walk towards it, thinking the woman inside looked a bit like Sarah, when I heard the voice of the man behind me. He had silently followed me, and now stood directly behind me, with the hammer held high over his head. She is ours! The sledgehammer came down hard and I ducked out of the way just in time. My heart pounding, I stumbled to the ground, off balance. I rolled away as a second swing of the giant hammer nearly missed me again. I got up to my feet, as quickly as I could, and backed away from the man. He was pursuing me still, and I turned and ran. The muddy ground caused me to slip as I turned a corner to get away from him and found myself heading towards the giant canopy at the center of the fair. I checked my watch. Still, nearly an hour until sunrise. Plenty of time. No, can't think like that. You've wasted half your time and you haven't found her yet. That means you're behind. You need to spot her quick and get her the hell out of here. 
I felt myself struggling to think clearly, as adrenaline took over and something else as well. An unfamiliar feeling like the naive recklessness of a young man, which I no longer was. I wanted to leave, and yet I found myself abandoning reason and self-preservation that more time I spent here. And yet, the giant canopy tent drew me in like a moth to a flame, and I went to it. No longer looking at the other carnival workers, every part of me was saying to go inside, that's where she should be. Looking back, I saw the man with the sledgehammer was no longer pursuing me, and I breathed a sigh of relief. Maybe he was getting reinforcements though, and that would be trouble. Feeling like a piece of iron filament being drawn towards a powerful magnet, I walked towards the huge crimson red canopy tent. Up this close, it was obvious how massive the thing was now. Inside would be a space lit up with lights and full of morbid wonders and curiosities. It loomed before me, dwarfing me in size, and I realized I was standing right before the entrance. Every part of me saying to go inside, to look and see what could be found within. And then I heard her voice. Try your luck at the spinning wheel, sir. I stopped in my tracks, afraid to turn and look, afraid. It wouldn't really be her, that it would be just some trick again, some attempt to stall me. But then I did, and it was her. It was really her, no mistaking it. She gave a shaky smile and lifted her hand to wave. I walked over to the booth and looked at her, my eyes filling with tears. I missed you so much, was all I could say. I missed you too, every day I missed you. And then some other force took over and her smile widened, like it was being pulled at the corners by unseen strings causing her to show her teeth. Her voice changed and became that of a carnival barker trying to grab your attention as you pass by. Try your luck at the spinning wheel, sir! I was stunned and didn't know what to say for a second. Sarah, let's get out of here. Come on, take my hand. Reaching over the counter, I saw her eyes flash back to her own for a second, but then they became full of hatred and murder. She hissed at me like a cat, her eyes now crimson red. Then she swiped at me with her nails, scratching my arm badly and leaving four long gashes there. She attacked my face next, flailing at it with quick lashes in succession, leaving me bleeding from her nails. I recoiled, terrified and in pain. Blood poured from my face and my arm, and I was suddenly having trouble seeing out of one eye. My vision was turning red and then black on that side. Run, she said her face turning back into her own for an instant. You can't save me. Just run. If you stay past sunrise, you'll be stuck here with the rest of us. And then her eyes flicked back to the crimson red shade and I saw her laughing at me. You can't save her. She's ours now. Other carnival workers started to come out from behind their booths and were now stalking towards me. A clown popped his head out from the giant canopy tent nearby and then when he saw me came running with a duck legged stride in his oversized floppy shoes. Following behind him was a man on giant stilts who had to duck to come through the doorway. He was juggling bowling pins that were set ablaze and threw one at me, nearly missing my face with it. Sarah stayed stubbornly put where she was, as if the carnival knew that I wanted her to chase me, to come after me, but no, it had plenty of others to do that. 
I backed away at the sight of the bloodthirsty carnies approaching, then turned and ran back towards the entrance. My instinct to survive suddenly taking over. Running half-blind through the midway, I saw more carnival workers leaving their booths, following after me, their eyes blank and zombie-like. Looking back, I saw dozens of them now in pursuit, breaking into a slow jog, and then running as they followed after me. Increasing my pace, I felt my heart booming in my chest, sweat pouring down my face. My eyes were wide and terrified, darting around looking for potential threats everywhere. Candy apple? The elderly woman was wearing an eye patch, and as she threw the boiling hot caramel sauce at me, she smiled, her teeth rotten and black. Some of the liquid sugar hit my face and I screamed as it burnt me. I knew that would scar me for the rest of my life, but didn't have time to think about it. I had a moment of pity for the woman, knowing now that she was just another victim of the carnival, the same as Sarah. No one from the online forums had ever considered that the carnies were themselves past visitors who hadn't been able to escape before sunrise. It was always assumed that they were a part of the carnival itself and had been since the start. My feet slipped in mud and I nearly fell. As I raced past the man with the sledgehammer, he jumped up and began to chase after me with the others, carrying his heavy mallet in both hands and screaming at me. Up ahead I saw the turnstiles and picked up my pace, seeing the faint glimmer of a sunrise on the horizon. The clown was there, appearing out of the fog once more, and as I got closer, I saw he was waiting for me. He held a small axe in his hand and chuckled when I got near. The crimson glow can't be undone. 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 The voices of others, drawing closer from behind, rose in volume, joining his, and I realized they were very close now. I had no choice, I would have to take my chances with the clown. I ran at him full speed, knowing I didn't have much time left. Once the sun came up, I was stuck here with the rest of them. No one was coming for me. Nobody knew I was here. The only reason I knew where Sarah had disappeared to was because of her obsession with the online forums related to the Crimson Carnival. She had become more and more involved until it completely took over her life, nearly ruining our relationship in the process. Then, one day, she had said that she was going to find a place for herself. She had left in the middle of the night, leaving me a note while I was sleeping. She had never come home after that, and I had always regretted not going with her. She had even given me the coin, saying that she wanted me to go with her, to experience it alongside her. She said not to lose it, that there were only a few left out there, and that they were exceedingly rare and valuable. But now I had lost it, just like I had lost her. The fucking clown had it. I had an idea at the last second as I ran towards him. The mud slipping beneath my feet made me think of when I was a kid playing soccer. How after scoring a goal or winning a game on a rainy day, we would slide around on the grass in the mud celebrating. Diving forward at full speed, I landed on my belly in the muck. It knocked the wind out of me, and since I wasn't a kid anymore, it hurt like hell, but it had the desired effect. 
My forward momentum took me under the turnstiles and I surprised the clown by knocking out his legs from beneath him. He went flying into the air, his axe spinning and shining in the faint light before landing a few feet away. Dozens of coins came flying out from his pockets also. They landed scattered on the ground in the mud, and I grabbed a handful of them before racing off back towards my car. I heard the clown screaming at me until his voice cut out suddenly in an instant as the sun peeked out from behind the horizon. Looking back with my one working eye, I saw that he was gone, and so was the carnival. But in my hand, the blood-red nickels from past visitors remained, proof of my visit, same as the long red scratches on my arm and on my face, the scars and burns I would wear for the rest of my life. And yet, still, staring at the muddy bloody coins in my palm, I knew I would be back. I had no choice.